Hello, everybody, and oh, welcome. I've, I've, <laughs> I've gone off to a bad start already there. I've used the, the wrong logo right at the very beginning. <laughs> We're back for another TMA Sports Network interview live interview and today we've got some guests but to tell you all about these guests and why we're speaking to them both i'm gonna let i'm gonna let gavin turn that down gav whatever that is um <laughs> okay let gavin tell you all who we're speaking to today and why we're talking to them okay guys so tonight we're joined by liam alford wka professional champion and Kazim the Dream Beg, ICO, WRSA, and IKF Professional World Champion. As you know, these two go head to head July the 4th uh, for a massive, massive undisputed contest. Um, and also on the line is going to be the vacant WKO belt. So it's all on the line for these two guys. And I'm, I'm excited to finally bring them head to head over over streaming which has become quite popular over the last 12 months but tonight we're going to hear them get involved in the track, get their thoughts let's bring them in let's bring them and, in and don't forget guys if you've got any questions um do uh, drop your comments on the stream and we'll bring them in so people can hear them um just just somebody's got their volume turned up um on their computers so if one of us whoever it is can we can if we can just turn it down just a touch so we don't get too much feedback but here they are like magic you seen the dream hey. Hey, lads. All right. so guys face to face head to head for the first time through, through a computer screen but we have the fight everyone's been talking about uh, we're coming out of a pandemic. We've got straight on it. We've promised you fighters that it's going to happen. We've promised the public it's going to happen. And now I'm so excited that we're on the roller coaster build up that, um, heading to July the 4th. So we'll start off with Liam. How are you doing? Uh, you good? Super ready to rock. Can't wait. <laughs> so, if I told you the fight was this Saturday, would yeah, you be ready? Yeah, but I'm, I'm, I'm ready in the morning. <laughs> and there's training. I keep seeing quite a bit of on Facebook, which is good. Uh, yeah, yeah, it, yeah shows, training it, shows, good. it shows training that you're active, good. you're working hard. Um, but yeah, just, just talk us through a little bit, obviously. I know we spoke to both of you individually, um, but since that time, it's been about a good five five weeks or so, four well, weeks. Yeah. How how's training adapted now? Now it's stepped up. We're only four weeks away, so tell everyone how how it's all going. Yeah, so this training camp, it's been going really well. Like, so like I was already fit before we started it because you know I was doing the army training, so so we were fit fit to be fit before we had to be fit to fight, you know, so it made it a lot easier. So it was like a camp before a camp. So uh, now when we're coming closer, we're just up and despairing and just opening the intensity a small bit. But at the same time, we're enjoying it. We're, we're getting it done and we're ready to rock. Fair play, fair play. And that's the difference, I suppose, getting the sparring in. Same for you, Kaz. Obviously, we've spoke quite a bit on the build-up. I've spoke to Neil quite a bit about how things are going. Um, How's things changed for you now for the last four weeks? The final push, how's it all going? Uh, same way, Gavin. You know, um, like when I spoke last time, I told you that I was already fit, I have had no time off over lockdown. I'm always in good shape, I never blow up out of shape. So, literally, as soon as we got the green light from you, you know, the training stepped up, and you would have seen yourself. It, a lot of my training's getting thrown up on social media. You can see exactly what I'm doing. And my, my, my videos are doing all the talking for me. And, and that's good because what I'm seeing at the moment is both of you posting what you're doing, which yeah. is the best thing to do because this is a much spoken about fight. There's going to be so many people talking about this fight and it deserves the build up. It deserves the people to be able to watch, see how things is going, seeing what you're doing in training. So, 
fair play to you both lads that you're doing the right thing from not showing away getting everything out there there's nothing to hide and come july the 4th oh, i'll tell you what as a promoter my promoter's hat is going off i am going to be a spectator and i can't wait to sit ringside and watch this fight i really really can't but kaz so we spoke about your opponents before now yeah. liam's on yeah. here um yeah. obviously everything you're putting on the line your wrsa belt your ico belt and <laughs> your ikf belt yeah. now also on the line is the vacant wko belt so just explain to people obviously we've had the conversation we were thinking about not going for titles having it bragging rights thingy now you're putting it all on the line and liam i know you was prepared to put it all on the line as well so credit to both of you but how much does this fight mean to you i know that you've been in very tough fights but surely this has got to be the one that you need to win because you're putting so much on the line that's the thing gavin like like i said before that echoing and like i said before gavin like when i come back i want to fight the best out there i want to fight the champions i want to fight the people with the belts but more than anything it was the names that people are talking about the names that people are saying are the best out there that's who i want to fight because surely that's who's going to prove number one so the, the the same way i said like even if the titles weren't attached to it i'd want i'd want that to fight more than the title the titles are just another initial another set of initials to me but it's me it's more that everyone you know the names are out there right now is me and liam so if everyone's talking about that everyone wants to see that i want that fight liam wants that fight you know that that's the biggest fight out there for both of us so like i said it's, it's nice getting the, the belts uh, on the way but for me it's more about fighting the best out there to prove who, who's the number one in the division and would you consider liam to be not number one because i know you're going to consider yourself to be number one but would yeah. you consider in your opinion liam to be right up there next to you for this spot okay well that's the thing well in everyone else's opinion it's between me and liam i don't see other names getting thrown up in the mix everyone that's talking about this weight class and talking about full contact kickboxing is talking about me and liam so yeah obviously like you said like i consider myself to be the best i don't consider myself to be one of the best i don't want to be top five i just want to have that number one top spot and the only way i'm going to do that is by fighting the names that everyone's talking about so the same way people are talking about me it's a, as many people talking about liam as well so if ever in everyone's opinion if liam's up there with me this fight's going to prove it and that's what makes the fight so exciting because it's for for some people for some people who maybe aren't uh, as knowledgeable about you both this is going at it looking at it on paper is almost like as close to a 50 50 as you're going to get as a bill so that in itself makes it really highly anticipated you know you're really looking forward to that fight even if you don't know a great deal about either fighter because you know what's on the line you know how much each fight is putting up so in that on its own makes a huge difference it, it, it's just when you see these big title fights and everything's on the line that in itself is enough to create the suspense the fighters then just have to go out and turn it on how just liam first um how with the world of social media now being the way it is how have you felt about sharing like training footage because i know that's something everyone does now to help build brands and sell tickets and stuff but how do you find that? Is that a weird thing to do? Because a lot of people used to keep it very secret. So is that something that you're quite happy to do or is it just part of the game now? Like, to be honest, I think it helps with building the fight. It helps with, like, getting your name out there and getting people to know this fight is happening and such and such. And if they're following your training, a lot of people, they're saying, well, I've been watching them train now. 
I want to watch him fight, so they're going to tune in. Yeah. But at the same time, like, I wouldn't be, like, worried about, say, Quaz or any of your, anyone else you're fighting, seeing your training, because, I don't know, it, it doesn't give away too much, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. one thing watching someone train, but a fight's a fight, it's completely different, so I don't know why some people would be too, like, yeah. thinking, oh, I'm not going to post this in case he sees it, because yeah, yeah. fight night's fight night, train is training, they're two different things. Yeah, but it, I I think it helps with, like at the end of the day, it's prize fighting, so we need we need an audience, we need people to tune in, and I think social media nowadays is the way to go to to get eyes on. What about you, Kaz? Because you you know you've like you've said before yourself, you've been in the game a while now. That that has changed. That's something maybe you wouldn't have done at the beginning of your career. So how's the transition? Because you guys seem to be like you're taking it quite seriously. On like is that. Is it part of the plan now? Has it become more of the structure towards building up to a fight? I think it... I think we're we're living in a world that's run by social media. But if you've like I said earlier, like I've I've probably never shared as much footage of my training like as I am now. Like right now, I'm I'm showing a lot of what I'm doing, but at the same time, there's a lot much still behind the scenes that that no one is seeing. Yeah, so, of course, yeah. It's like it's like the same as Liam said. Like with me, you can put me on YouTube and you can g watch loads of stuff on me. But mm. at the end of the day, what happens in the fight is the fight. The training is is all the the preparation, getting ready for the fight. And if I know I'm taking care of everything I need to, and I'm sure Liam is too. So well, I I see as I see it as well as like maybe other people who are getting into the sport if they're quite young or looking to emulate what you guys have done it's quite inspirational as well watching your videos i watched your videos the other day about 10 minutes before i went out to the gym for a little workout myself and it got me a bit pumped i was like yeah look at these guys going i didn't train anywhere near as hard as you but you know <laughs> it, it, it still looked great it was it was great to watch it's good to see i like it a lot yeah am i back in the room yeah you're back yeah. in the room now gav mate i don't know what happened then you disappeared just, and then my computer started rumbling and just turned off <laughs> Turned off, but uh, I don't know what I've missed. But we, we've just had a question. Come, we've just actually had a question coming from Neil Kelly. If that's okay to read it out, it's, it's directed at Liam. Yeah, uh, this is the first uh, spectator question coming in of the evening. Now, so, question now, for Liam. Steve, 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 Neil is Kazim's coach. Yeah, no, I know. I know Neil. Yeah, we've met. We've met before. Um, so <laughs> he's asking, do you see? Kazim being a tougher fight um, than Dylan was? So, like, the way I see it is their styles are completely different. They're two different fighters. So you need to approach it differently. So say, like, my game plan for Dylan would be completely different to Quaz. And the same way that, like, Dylan would come at me different, uh, he'd come at Quaz because we're different styles then again. So the way I look at they're both world-class fighters. So either way, I need to get myself in the best nick and bring my best self to that fight so whether if i was fighting dylan again or fighting quaz i'd still be preparing to bring my best self because they're both world-class fighters i just have a different approach for both of them because they've got different styles that was a politician and, and, well, <laughs> and liam i know you was talk just going off the dylan fight i know you was involved in the dylan fight which was 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 the fight that Obviously, you was good. Everyone knew who you was. But that fight, getting that WKI strap really catapulted you now into this fight, into this position. Because like I said, everyone's talking about you two. It's like the Joshua Fury of kickboxing. and and But this one's actually happening. Would you say this is... Would, would you say this is your biggest fight to date? Is this the most you've ever been switched on for a fight? Well, like, like I was saying, every fight, like any fight is going to say that their next fight is their biggest fight. And then the one after that, their next fight is their biggest fight. But I think that this fight is the biggest publicised. It's got the most eyes on and it's got the most to gain. But um, every fight, you're still going to bring your best self. You're still going to train as hard as you ever can. But yeah, I would agree and say it's the biggest eyes on fight and the biggest to gain fight so to say what and, about and Kaz, sorry go on, Steve. 
I was just about to say for, for Kaz on the opposite spectrum, you've fought almost everybody in your career. How how do you still, when you've done it for so long and beaten everybody, how do you? Because obviously Liam's going to be, you know, he's coming after those, but you know, he's he's going to be on it. But how do you keep yourself motivated when you've consistently beaten everybody off that's come at you? How, how do you? My my motivation is just to have that number one spot. Like, you know, as you know, like right now, I'm 49 and old. This is my 50th fight. What what bigger 50th fight could I have than this? So my motivation is that, like, you know, I've been in the game a long time. I fought everyone out there. I fought all different styles. And my motivation right now is higher than it's ever been before. But you know what? I've been fighting at world level for a long time as well. If you remember, I fought for my for my first world title in 2014. So we're in 2021 now. So I was I was fighting at world level from 2014. So motivation's n- never been an issue for me. Like just every every fight, I'm just driving harder. I'm pushing harder. I just want to be the best I can be. And Claire is asking, um, do you approach this fight differently with, you know, obviously to the one that you had, you had with Dylan, it was a very technical fight. Um, are you approaching the fight um, with Liam different or do you have the same approach to every fight? Um, with me, like like I said, I cover every basis. So when I'm stepping in that ring, I'm, I'm ready for anything that my opponent's going to bring for me. And I, w- one thing I believe is, I don't. It's not about the person that's on the other side. It's about what I've done to get ready. So, as long as I've covered every basis, it don't matter what, like what person's in, in the opposite corner. I I can't wait. I really can't wait. I really feel that that this fight is the biggest kickboxing fight that's ever happened. And I'm going to put that out there. I can't. I don't know that there was ever a fight before with four professional world title fights on. Um, I don't know whether you guys know or whether anyone watching knows, but this, from what, from my knowledge, is the first ever professional unification contest with four belts on the line. Obviously, Kaz. You set records in your and in your last one with the other belts, and now we stepped it up again for four. Liam, obviously you're a part of this now, heading to try and get, become four-time professional kickboxing world champion. We're setting we're setting um, records here, guys. You two here on the fourth of July are changing the game, absolutely smashing the game, and we're going about boxing. People only know about boxers because of the content they're putting on social media, because of the content the promoters are doing, the content you guys are doing. And and this is our, our game with it now, to get you guys the recognition you deserve. Whoever walks out of that ring, you're going to be a four-time professional world champion. That's got to be something unreal. Liam, how would that feel? Walking out of that oh, ring with four belts. I'm buzzing. I'm buzzing. We just about heard that then, mate. We had a little bit of feedback then, but we have, we, we got the gist of it. <laughs> but there's no room left on those. There's no room left on that shelf. That's what I'm saying. We'll definitely find another one because I'm definitely playing home the belts. <laughs> and Kaz, obviously, to come out with another world title, to be this fight, if you win this fight, this surely cements your status as number one. You, yeah. Like you said, this will be your 50th yeah. fight. You, you're three-time world champion already. This will be your fourth belt if you come victorious in this fight. Just how would that feel to walk out of there knowing of change the game? Um, that's the plan, Gavin. You know when I when I come said it to you, that's the plan. Fight the best, fight the champions, get all the belts, then just cement my my own legacy as 
being that number one. No one can ever try and dispute it. No one can ever try to talk to me. And you know what? On top of everything, 50 and 0. If anyone can name another kickboxer that ever goes on to do 50 and 0, then I'll, I'll clap my hands for him. But this surely <laughs> has to just prove, you know, I'm, I'm the number one. And and I remember having that first conversation with you. I know I keep going back to it. I've pestered Kaz, Steve, for years. To no, no, yeah, and yeah. I think I think he thought to himself, who the fuck is this guy? <laughs> and he was just... And I finally got him. I said, what do you want to do? I'm not just going to... I don't want to just put you in a fight. What do you want to do? And he said, I want to fight the best. I want to win the title. So I was like, yeah, 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 we'll do it. Blagged it. Absolutely <laughs> blagged it. <laughs> And now look, now look where we are. He's fought, he fought for the ICO World Title. Um, it was the ICO first, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. The Jonathan May. That. That's it. He, at Canuck. After that, then he went for the WRSA, obviously, and then he went into the IKA, and then now we're going into this with WKA World Champion, and the same with you, Liam. When you fought Dylan, I said to you, I want you back. I want you back on the show. Obviously, you're not even from England. And I said to you, I want to work with you. I want to I want to help promote and get you on the shows. And he was just one hit singing Sweet Caroline after the fight. And it felt like we was in Ireland that night. When he won that belt, it felt like we was in Ireland. Then anyway, it was like even though Dylan's a good friend of mine and and we promoted Dylan this is what these fights are for it's it's about proving the best of the best being a sport and that night that Liam come over here and won that world title the atmosphere after from the English fans and the Irish fans was unbelievable so instead of beating around the bush what's are you going to bring a bit of Ireland over to us? Are you going to bring some Irish cheer over with you? Yeah, so we're trying to... People are trying to figure out if they can get over it, you know, with the situation we're in with the pandemic, with um, people having to quarantine when they come back, with work and stuff. But um, we're, we're going to try to bring over as much people as we can. But obviously it's a lot harder this time around with the pandemic when COVID and everything, you know. Yeah. With with that in mind, Gav, you might be able to answer this question as well, because whilst the pandemic's been going on, you've obviously been to a lot of uh, events still. Um, How is the atmosphere going to change things if the numbers aren't, you know, in-person numbers aren't what they would usually be? Uh, how do you think that's going to affect you both? Because normally you would both be, you'd both be used to having, obviously, your fan bases and people there cheering you on. So, if the numbers aren't quite so even or if they, they, they're they just a lot lower than they would ordinarily be, how does that affect your your game, if at all? Let me start with that one, Steve. Yeah, go on. Because no. you, you've been to some of these events, haven't you? So. I've been to the events now with the professional boxing with no crowds. And the first one I went to was eerie. It was, it was weird. It was really, really weird. Um the more I've been to, I've got to tell you, I've really enjoyed them. It's become the norm. It's been a mm. silent room, quieter than the gym. And the fighters have just got on with it. And we agreed this fight with no crowds. We agreed yeah. this fight yeah. just, just to stream it. Uh, but obviously now we're allowed fans back. And obviously the last two we shows won. I've been yeah. to have had fans. And... It was strange seeing fans back. Now, I know for you guys, it's not going to be no different because you haven't fought without fans. But for me, seeing fans back at the shows over the last two weeks I've been to, it was it was really not strange, but it was like, wow, we're back. It was, it was good. It was good to hear people cheering, cheering them on. But... We might have some big news coming tomorrow, okay, about the venue. I'm not going to say much, but we, we've got our venue secured. But obviously, with what's going on, we don't know. So, 
They made tickets. I think we could sell 1,500 tickets, 2,000 tickets for this fight. It's it's getting ridiculous. The amount of people we're having, we're asking for tickets. Just the general public, it's it's amazing. So you might have some news tomorrow, guys, if not the next day, about a possible a suspense, uh, a possible. <laughs> uh, I don't know what how to word it, but something special for the fans, and just because, and. It will be something special for the fighters as well. So I haven't told anyone yet, but I just want to get things confirmed tomorrow. But it'll be good. We've, it'll be good seeing people back. We've got a question here, Gav. Um, saying, is there going to be three judges from different from the three different from the uh, three different from all the different organisations? So that's a good question. Good question. We're gonna. Um, take it out the ballpark here as well with the judges so Liam Kaz this will be the first you've heard of this as well yeah. Um, yeah. there's four belts and there's four judges every organisation is bringing their own judge now I don't know who they're bringing but every person from the organisation is bringing their own judge so we're going to have the referee and then we're going to have four scoring judges so it's um uh, there's there's no bias to, there's no uh conflict of interest every organization scores by it's their own way so this could be another talking point but we've got four judges and a referee so so let's so just to clarify so i understand i'm just wrap, wrap my head around that so there's four judges and a referee will the referee also be scoring the fight he will be scoring the fight, but this referee score will not count unless we have a tie. Okay. All right. Well, so that, that, that covering, we are covering all angles for this fight. There's going to be no controversy. There's going to be so many sets of eyes from organisations on this, which have got no play to either fighter. It's going to be... Uh, uh, we're really taking this fight seriously on the production side because we've got the best two fighters in full contact. We want to give both of them the best opportunity. Liam, as you know, when you come over before, you come away with that belt. We do everything fair. And I think the only way to make this fair for the organisations as well, because remember, we won't be having... We won't, wouldn't be having all these belts on the line if it wasn't for the organisations. Uh, WRSA, when I first spoke about doing the ICO belt, they supported me. Andrew mm. Hennessy then put the WRSA belt on. Carl Sams then put the IKF belt on. Now John's putting the WKO. These guys with these organisations are helping play a massive part in this to make these fights yeah. credible and to change the game. It's, it's not just TMA Fight Series. It's the organisations who have worked with it. But it's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. Right. Just a quick one. Liam. <coughs> How do you beat Kaz? 49 people haven't. How do you beat him? Tell him. The same way I beat the last unbeaten person you gave me, Gavin. <laughs> Come on. Give us some more. Give us some more. How, he, how do you beat him? Why are, you, why are you so confident in beating him? Because I, I know the hard work I've put in. I know what I'm capable of. And, like, you can put anyone in front of me. Like, I just won't stop. You know, I I'll honestly will do whatever it will take. Like, in preparation now and on fight night. Like, no matter what happens, I'm just gonna I'm just going to keep going. And Kaz, same to you. How do you beat Liam? Why do you beat Liam? Oh, but Liam's com a completely different fighter to the other 49 you faced. He's coming in hungry. How and why do you beat him? Uh, Gav, there's, there's, like I keep saying, there's levels to this. There's levels. And honestly, there's I put myself above everyone else's level. And, and I proved that. I proved that with the Dylan fight. Everyone was talking about it. Everyone was saying it was equally matched. I proved it weren't it weren't it weren't equal. It weren't close. It was one sided. There's levels to this. And you're saying that I've I haven't fought someone with um 
Liam Stowe, have, have you forgot? I come from a, a light calm background. I used to fight all the mat fighters. I used to fight all the the um, the tournament fighters. I've seen them yeah, a Gav. million times, Gav. I'm talking. I'm talking about <laughs> 49 full contact fights, but you're forgetting about the hundreds and hundreds of um, mat and light continuous fights. So I've seen every style. Every style. I tell you what. It's going to be interesting. It's going to be interesting, Steve. I can't wait. I can't wait for July the 4th. I can't oh, wait for wait. the build-up. Awesome. I can't wait for the build-up. Guys, this isn't a definite, but these, these are the plans I've got in my head leading up to this fight. Uh, I want to try and get some behind the scenes. I know you're both putting a lot up, which is unbelievable. It's really good to keep it coming. But I, I want us to try and get in the camp now. We're going to try and get in. To both of your camps, Liam. If we can come over to Ireland, we're even planning a trip. But obviously, we're just seeing what restrictions we can do, and we're going to come out and speak to you both. When you both come over, Liam, when you come over for the fight, the plan at the moment is to do a press conference, a live press conference on here. Uh, hopefully, with fans there as well, um, Harry and Neil seeing the points of the trainers and that's another good point we're going to get the coaches on here as well get the coaches on for an interview let's see how they feel about the fight and how they're working things and then obviously we're going to have the weighing i'd like to try and get an open workout if we can i don't know whether we're going to be able to but tomorrow if things go as planned tomorrow it's going to be it's going to be really really good the venue is Really right. Good. right, we got one more. We got one more question. One more question here. Oh, we got a bit of echo coming on there. We got one more question here. Uh, is it going to be one? Uh, is it going to be a 12 three minute round? That's an interesting question. I think we just forget the rounds and we just do how many rounds it is until we get a winner. One of them wins. Yeah, yeah we, we, won't, we won't need many then, Gav. <laughs> oh, there we go. 30, <laughs> 30, it took 32 minutes, 21 seconds to get for someone to have a go. Um, <laughs> I, just, just quickly, because we've got quite a few people, we've got a few people asking. We will update you on news on what's happening in regards to a stream. We will be um, putting out some news on that shortly. So just bear with us on that one. Um, but everybody who wants to see, it's going to be able to see. It. We'll, we'll assure you of that. So. But we'll let you know in what format, how we're going to do it, etc. on the build-up. So you'll all know what's going on. So no no worries there. All right, guys. Anyone got anything left to say? Let's do this. <laughs> Four weeks. <laughs> Neil, Neil, Kelly's asked, Neil Kelly's asked if we get a decent gate, will you be able to afford a decent internet connection? <laughs> I'm tighter than the cum, mate. I'm tighter. But I'm not actually tight. I just get con. I just get con with everything. <laughs> nice one. Well, but guys, it's been a pleasure talking to you both. And in four weeks, you're going to put it all on the line. And I, I've, I can't thank you both enough. It's it's going to be something special. And uh, may the best man win. Good luck to you both. Thanks, and, I'll see, and I'll see you both soon, Liam. I'll give you um, the con the information for the hotel and that. I'm just waiting on this venue, yeah. Um, yeah. just to see what we're doing. But guys, it's been a pleasure, and I'll see you both in four weeks. Yeah, thanks, guys. See you later, Gav. Yeah, everybody. Yeah, thank you very much for watching. Everybody that got involved. Um, if you've missed the interview live, you will be able to go back and watch it on both Facebook and it's up on our YouTube channel. Um, and it'll soon all the interviews that we've done, just to let you all know, will be up on our new website very, very soon. So you'll be able to go and catch up on any of the interviews we've done with any of the fighters at any time on demand. Till then, thank you very much. Catch you soon. Uh.